hello there, humans of these earthlies, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and hope you're lucky enough to be doing it. So I'm Bushcom Blitz, and I am back with a, another look at a French tank today. We're trying to get through the tanks in the French line. We've done the tier 9, uh, tier 10, sorry, not the tier 9. We've done the tier 10, the tier 6, uh, and the tier 8. Now we're doing the tier 7 tank, the AMX M4. 45 and this is a hell of a tank this is an absolute keeper for me i love this tank and i love it for all the reasons that i normally love tanks but if if you want a direct comparison and i believe it is a very very apt comparison between this and any other tank uh, the tank that i think it most closely resembles both in terms of performance uh and armor profile and all kinds of things like that is the tiger one which is also a tier 7 heavy um and it's got a couple of things going for it that really make it stand out for me. Uh, most notably is the gun handling. Um, it's like a Tiger one with a little bit more gun depression and slightly less mobility. But they're very, very, very similar tanks in terms of gun handling. And I'm going to get to that in just a wee while. In fact, I'm going to do a quite extensive talk that may be a little bit dry for some of you humans. Uh, it's not going to be fun-packed uh, or feature-filled, but it will be important. And it's going to be uh, something that I think is often overlooked in the soft stats. Something that um, you can find that if you use something like Sock Robbers. Uh, the King of Blitz Stars, a fellow who started Blitz Stars uh, and still is the King of Blitz Stars, um, Sock Robert, Big Dave, uh, he's got a thing called Tank Compare that you can get off of Blitz Stars. Now, the URL for Tank Compare is pretty simple. It's tank-compare.blitzstars.com. And I'm going to show you some of the inside stuff that really makes this thing tick. Uh, and it does tick along just fantastically. One of my favorite Tier 7 heavies. Uh, and it's not it's not really a heavy like you'd expect uh, like a t29 or a kv3 or any one of those things um, and I don't I, I love those heavies too because they're very particular breed they're a specific breed of tank uh, this is very much in the mobile highly mobile very nice gun handling uh, and incredible penetration and I just want to highlight something I talked about yesterday with the uh, the Carl the ARL 44. Um, and I don't think I emphasized enough how incredible the penetration stats on that gun are. At tier six, it has the same kind of stats as an IS-3's BL-9, which is a very good gun at tier nine uh, in terms of penetration numbers. But that's on a tier six heavy. You've got 212 mils of pen on a tier six heavy. And this tank has exactly the same gun. It's got a 90 millimeter gun. It's just got an extra round a minute. That's basically all there is to it. But there is more beneath the surface. And to, to tell you why the more beneath the surface is so important, we're going to have a look here at Tank Compare. Now, I've already brought a whole heap of tanks up, but there's a specific stat I want to talk to you about. And you'll see the ARL44 there. Um, it's the same tank when you're using the guns as a 10.5 millimeter, uh, 10.5 centimeter, 105 millimeter, and 90 millimeter guns. But the difference between the two tanks they're both the same dispersion. The difference between the two tanks, the ARL44 using the 90 millimeter and the AMX using the 90 millimeter is the on movement slash rotation multiplier you get. Now you can see it's 0.22 there. Um, that's basically when you're moving the turret around, the higher that number it is, the worse the bloom on the reticle when you're looking at it. And it's why, even though you only get another shot a minute on this tank, the gun is actually a lot better. Now, you can see that the Tiger 1 has the same 0.16 uh, on the move dispersion rating as the AMX M M4 MLE45. And you can see some horror stories in there as well. Like the uh, KV3, for instance, has a uh, 0.26 or something, and the KV2 has a 0.28, um, 0.27 for the KV3. They're big numbers, and they severely affect the way the tank plays. And it's why I love these tanks and these kind of stats, because it shows you that these tanks are very, very good at on-the-move firing for a heavy tank. Now, the king of all this is the 140. The Object 140 has a 0.08 on-the-move dispersion rating. What this means, in actual fact, is that you get a gun that works out of the box, first time, every time, and you don't get the bloom. Now, I'm going to show you a side-by-side -side shot of the uh, 45 and the KV-3. Neither can run vertical stabilizer. So, 
you can see just how different it is when moving and how quickly this thing takes off on the right when it wants to and how slow the KV-3 is and how massive that reticle bloom is when you're moving the turret around and how that doesn't affect, despite the fact that it's got quite a high aim time, nearly as much uh, the accuracy of the weapon as it does for a KV-3, despite both the tanks not having terribly good aim times. Now, it's really important to remember that gun handling as a stat like that is, is everything for a tank like this. It doesn't have a huge armor profile, but it has wonderful mobility, absolutely superb mobility. Now, the king of mobility at this tier for a heavy tank is the Tiger One, and it, it's been turned into a supremely judicious uh, heavium. But the gun on this, coupled with 10 degrees of gun depression, the Tiger One doesn't have that 10 degrees of gun depression. Uh, the excellent on-the-move dispersion rating and the absolutely crazy uh, turret traverse numbers that you have with this thing. You've got 37 degrees per second of turret traverse, which is really important, and 41 degrees per second of traverse on your tracks when you're running double rations and vents. Um, they translate into a tank that can get shots anytime. And you've got the same really trollish upper glacis as that VK2801, that style of upper glacis. And it's the same as you had on the ARL44. The big Carl, though, you don't have the tracks sticking out the front, which make your drive wheels easier to hit. Now, there was someone on the YouTube comment section who said it was no good for side scraping. Um, and I disagree. It's not great for side scraping by any means. But here's the thing. I go on about side scraping because you can use it in any tank, but you can't use it uh, offensively in every tank. And by that, what I mean is with a tank like this, you're going to walk up and you're going to side scrape and you can't over angle. With an E75 or a KV3 or a KV4, you can really angle out and still maintain enough armor to be effective and, and bounce shots. In this tank, you more or less side scrape to actually uh, draw shots and pull shots in and then you turn around and shoot. And you can see the upper glacis is excellent in situations like this because you kind of angle it, like you artificially increase the angle on that upper glacis to the point where, and look at these shots that are going in with this gun. I mean, this is a heavy tank. This is a heavy tank. It, it's, it's not, but it's got enough armor to actually play the role of a heavy tank. Unlike, you know, the, um, the tier eight and the tier nine and the tier 10 French heavies. This thing can bounce shots and you'll, you'll hit shots no scope all the time. I really love it. I, I just loved it a lot. And I've got to put a big caveat in here. That's a high skill level. To be able to side scrape correctly in it, to always be aware of where the enemy is, uh, to, to get the most out of it, and to play it with the right degree of, you know, finesse. Because it is a finesse tank. You, you have no armor on your sides. If you expose this thing, you'll get smashed. Um, you're only looking at a top speed, which is quite surprisingly low. Uh, and that, that the, the reason I find it and say it's quite surprisingly low is it gets there very quickly. It's got good terrain resistance stats, just like the Tiger One. It's got the best power to weight ratio of a heavy in its class uh, at, at its tier. Even though it only goes 35 kilometers an hour, it, it gets there awfully quick. And you can see I'm actually coming out here with that upper glacis really steep at an angle even to the point where i'll explode my drive wheel a little because i'm in camouflage and that means that by the time that i'm spotted i'm pulling back so the drive wheel should be behind the corner but the upper glacis won't be uh, and they'll bounce off it your turret isn't particularly strong but it can be used in a pinch uh hull down and it's it's a better option than nothing at all. It, it's not particularly strong. No, don't don't think you're going to be able to just take shots through the turret and and make it all the time. And don't think you can absolutely rely on bounces off that upper glacis too, because you can't. It, it's it's very situational. You're getting bounces more because it's an auto bounce than the armor profile or the effective armor. I'm going to give you a little look here at what I'm talking about with the side scraping. Um, and, and you'll see what I mean here. If you over angle, you will get wrecked. And you can see that, that big IS there. I'm not over angling to him, but I'm gonna over angle in just a second. Um, and you'll see there's a lot of tanks over there and I, I'm trying to track a lot of targets, but I'm, I'm not offensively side scraping. I'm not pumping out and trying to get big damage uh, and taking risks. I'm more or less just really flat angles off the edge of that rock. Uh, you've got to do that in the, in the French. And you'll see I'm flattening an angle up. And when I get over angled there, over angled, 
that's when you get dangerous, when you can get penned. But he doesn't take advantage of that, thankfully. You can see how wide I'm swinging my butt out there, trying to get him to stick around, showing him just a little bit of leg, um, and I get punished for it. That's what we're talking about with over-angling, guys. You've got to be flat-angled side-scraping here, where you're getting bounces not because of the thickness of the armor, but because of anything being over 70 degrees will be an auto-bounce in the game. Uh, you can be overmatched, I guess, but uh, you should be all right. And uh, and you're going to see here, this is, I'll, I'll show you a game, um, a full game. This is the AMX in its element. Um, AMX to AMX with the right camo scheme too. Looks good. Uh, the other AMX up there. And I am in licorice all sorts here because I've been quite aggressive uh, and it's not angled severely enough to get any kind of a bounce there. And you're going to see the gun really do well in a couple of instances in this game uh, where I pre-aim the gun. Now, someone was talking to me about this the other day, something that they they said their son was doing. One of the patrons was talking to me. I can't remember who it was. Uh, it might have been... Oh, I'm going to say it might have been positive, uh, positive ways. might have been one of the boys. Um, but I do that a couple of times here where I pre-aim the gun before I go around the corner. And I've just never really thought about it. But... It is something that you do, and that IS-2 was waiting for me. Look at how accurate this gun is, despite the .337 dispersion. Um, and the 10 degrees of, of traverse, coupled with the accuracy, means you're never really going to struggle to get a shot in. There should always be a way to get a shot in. Um, and because you can pre-aim and it's quite accurate and you can stick it there, then you're going to see here, we kind of walk around, pre-aim, have a shot. And we're going to do it on the right-hand side here in a big way with the IS and the AMX M445 there as well. That IS-2 waited for me last time, got a shot. I'm not going to let him repeat the dose again. I'm leaving him to his own desserts just there. There's the KV-2. He does not have the on-the-move accuracy, obviously. He is a massive big derpasaurus. Um, now, we've set the gun there. We're going to set it again. Just move forward. And then we're going to set it again and just move forward and you can see set it and release the gun as you get around the corner it's nothing to do with like actually aiming the gun i'm putting the gun there and releasing the button as i get around the corner and with a gun like this that has actually really good uh dispersion on the move then happy days you're going to be killing it um it's just enough of a blend for me to make it really worthwhile and i enjoyed it a lot at tier seven it's more of a heavy than the 8, the 9, the 10. But it's not quite as strong a heavy as uh, armor profile wise as anything that's a real true heavy at this tier, like a T29 or a KV3. Um, those are, or, you know, they're proper heavy tanks that bounce based purely on the, oh, and I've been that IS2 before, where you get stuck between the stairs uh, and wrecked. Um, and you're going to see a couple of the shots here that I hit on the KV-2, uh, absolutely thanks to the gun. There's there's nothing else to talk about. It's got the same gorgeous penetration values. The best penetration values of a tier 7 heavy tank are on this. The equal best uh, on-the-move dispersion rating is on this tank. The best gun depression stats of a tier 10 heavy are on this tank. Now there are tier 10 premium heavies, but I am absolutely just talking about heavy tanks in the tech trees. Um, you know, and it's very, very quick. It's got good traverse numbers. It's got great turret traverse numbers. You really only issue is your armor, which is not nice. It's not good armor. And all the bounces you're gonna get are be will be because of angles uh, and they'll be exploiting angles and you've seen i've got lots of bounces this game but again i'm playing it for those bounces and you're going to see me do something very odd here uh, a lot of you who can play a bit will know what i'm doing but i'm going to drive forward and there's nothing there so i'm going to fire off a shot and the reason is because if there is anyone sitting out there i will immediately be spotted but I'm not. So I'm figuring he's either AFK at the bottom spawn or he's camping the ridge lines down the back, but I haven't seen him all game. So I'm going to run right around the back here. I'm going to drive away from that spawn area at the bottom just in case he's a camping McCamperson. And I'm going to go as far around as I possibly can to ensure that there is a very, very little chance of me being spotted. It feels like a proper heavy on this, and I love me a proper heavy on. Um, you can carry in it, but it will struggle more than true heavy tanks 
when you're getting crossfires because your side armor is brutally ineffective. You can be penned by KV2s and the like through the side for full hit point rolls. And there he is, just where I thought he would be uh, if he was AFK. But you know, you never take chances on these things. And we fill him up and probably get a, I don't know, 800 hit points worth of damage that we shouldn't have got. Thankfully, the Nashorn is here to save me and take uh, and take the kill. <laughs> I don't care. I'll keep firing. Uh, I'm, I'm not obsessed with getting a six kill from this dude. Um, but thank you, Nashorn, for saving my bacon. On the plus side, he did say, good job, AMX, when I was up the top laying waste to the, to the humans. We've got the Scout Medal, which is gorgeous. Uh, 4,144 damage. Five enemies spotted, hot diggity dog. Uh, and that's the AMX 45. Uh, I really recommend it. I loved it, really, really loved it. I don't know if it is gonna be perfect for everyone. It is a tough drive. It is not a drive for a new player. It is a drive for someone who can absolutely control the angles of a tank, uh, understands the tactics and how to put a gun to work. And I forgot, so you've got the best, uh, you've got the best on the move dispersion rating, equal best. You've got the best gun depression, 10 degrees, you know, fantastic stuff. You've got the um, really, really good uh, rate of fire and everything like that, the best penetration numbers. You've also got the best DPM of a, a tier uh, seven heavy, only by 2% over the Tiger One, another one of my favorites. Um, so if you liked the Tiger One, I would suggest that this is the kind of tank you'll enjoy. If you found the Tiger One to be a punish and a bad experience, and a little like, a little bit like birthing a watermelon, uh, don't go this tank, you won't enjoy it at all. Uh, I'm Bushcrom Blitz, rock and roll humans. Thank you so much for watching, continuing your support. Uh, it is a pleasure to be involved with such an enormous and widespread community of uh, people. There's some really good guys out there. Uh, don't let the haters get you down. Love you all and see you out there. Stay safe on the battlefield.